Hello and welcome to my Lloyd Sim Circuit Simulator series. My name is Carlo Castillo from CPE 107 Lab, Section B1, Group 4. And today I'm going to discuss you my solutions to my problems. <laughs> and the problems that are came to me are number 1, number 6, and number 7. And so if you look at our number 1, the instruction was to use this uh, truth table right here on the sum products of the uh, lecture. And sum products are performed on every output that has 1. And it is done by converting the inputs into literal. So meaning if the input is 0, it is indicated with prime. So A is 0, thus A prime. B is 0, thus it is B prime. And C is 1, and so we just place C. So it is done for every output that has 1. And after that, since this is a sum of products, we sum them together, which indicates the or operation right here. So as you see, this is the uh, uh, ex uh, equation for this truth table. And now we go back to our De Morgan's universal NAND gates. So De Morgan states that we can use NAND, combination of NAND gates to mimic other gates such as inverter, AND, and OR gate. So if you look here on my solution, uh, in order to perform a inverter, Using NAND gate, we take the one input and NAND it to itself. So as you can see right here, that I'm clicking, the input of A is 1. And so the output right here is 1. I mean, the input of A is 0, and so the output is 1. And if we click that, since the input of A is 1, the output will be zero so that is how you create an inverter and on the middle part right here this is my and uh, operation so in order to create an and operation using NAND bits we first we take two inputs NAND them together which is right here and then after NANDing them together the output will be NANDed to itself Right here so as you can see this one is wire a and this is wire b so since wire a is one wire b is one we nand them so one and one is one negate it which is zero and then we nand it again zero and zero which is zero negate it and the output is one right here so if we change this one as you can see, it is it holds true 1 and 0, which is 0, negated, which is 1. So 1 and 1 is 1, negated, which is 0. So it follows the operation of an and gate. And for our OR gate, so in order to create an OR gate, we first NAND the inputs all of the inputs to itself so meaning here this is my input one we nand it to itself this is my input two we nand it again to itself and then the output of these two will be nanded again to create the or operation so as you can see since uh this line doesn't change that much so it will always stay zero so zero or 0, which is the output will be 0 right here. So that is how you create an OR operation using NAND gate. So if we look at the analysis of this circuit, and as you can see, it holds true. So if we compare this side by side to the uh, truth table that, were, that was given to us, as you can see, we have 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. We, on the simulator, we have 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. So, it is actually the same. So, we can use NAND gates to mimic other uh, existing gates such as inverter, AND, N, or OP gates. And for our next problem, we, I was given uh, number 6. And so, I was instructed to derive the equation from this K map. So this is a K map right here. And it is done. 
by grouping the in the outputs that has one on an even interval meaning they must be on a group of two four six eight and so on and that is the first rule the second rule is that in order to group it must be as big as possible and the third rule is that there must be no diagonals so diagonals are not allowed only horizontal and vertical and if we look at my uh, first term right here i'm just gonna change color so b d prime so the way that i derive this uh combination of literals is that we first group them together so i group all of the corners so meaning if the output one is on the corners or on this edges on these four edges right here we can group them together so meaning we can group this one we can group this one or we can group this one let's say for example this is we have a value of one right here we can group them together as well as long as they are on the edges so it must be as big as possible so if there's a one right here you are required to group them together these two group them as one and now since i'm looking at the pink group so the corners we now look at the inputs so this these are the uh, rows and columns that are that we are going to look at so on the uh, vertical side this one we look at the inputs so if the input uh, change it must be cancelled out so as you can see zero uh, input from a zero change from a change from zero to one so we cancel a so what remains is b prime and we say b prime because the input at b is zero and so we now look at our uh, horizontal uh, inputs right here on the cd you notice that D, uh, C change from 0 to 1 as well. And so what remains is uh, input D. And since in D is 0, we indicate it by D prime. And then we add them together right here. So after that group, we now proceed to our next group, which is the blue-violet right here. And if you look at right here, the rows that I'm that we're going to look at is this one, the first row, and the third and fourth column. So as you can see, A, B did not change, and they are both zero, which is this A prime B prime. And if we look at our C D input, we notice that D change from one to zero. And so what remains is C. So that is the explanation for the second group, the A prime, B prime, C. So the rest is, uh, the rest of the groups are follows the rule. So we have green and pink, which is this one. Uh, this one. And uh, if you look at right here, at input A, B, A did not, uh, B change. And so what remains is a and if we look at right here c d did not change so we just convert it into literals so we have c and d prime and so on the on our fourth uh input we have yellow green which is this group right here this group right here and so we look at the uh rows which is this one the row AB did not change, thus the AB uh, literals. And so if we look at our CD inputs, we notice that B did not change and only C changed. So that explains the uh, D part right here. So that is for my uh, problem number six. And since we have a simulator, we're going to apply that to the simulator. So as you can see, if you click here, problem number 6, and let's try some uh, values. So, 
let's say I want to test one of the corners, let's say all of them, all of the inputs are zero. So as you can see here, zero, 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 the output is one. And if we change this into uh, 1000 or 100, changes to 1000, 100, the output is also one. And if we look at right here, on the if all of the inputs are one, let's try all of the inputs are one. You notice that the output is the same. So here, uh, I mean this one, this one right here. And let's try a combination of zero. Let's say zero one one zero. This part right here, zero one one zero. The output here is zero. So to simply put, we just look at the analysis, and we notice that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight output of ones, and we have three, six, eight, eight output of ones in our K map. So that is for my problem number six. And for my problem number seven, which is convert this equation into canonical form. And canonical form is described as uh, having all of the mean terms or max terms to have all of the literals that were used in the uh, equation or in the circuit. So as you can see, our problem right here is has uh, x y plus x prime z plus y prime. So as you can see, on our first term, we are missing z, we are missing y right here, and we have missing x and z. And so there is a rule in uh, logics that states that uh, if the in, if we or or if we add the input, if we or the the uh, the z the input z and or and the z prime if we order them we have a value of one so we're going to use this in order to uh, add all of the missing literals so meaning right here on our first equation uh, on our first term we simply multiply one and one is equal to z plus z prime and this is our basis right here. So you can simply put the operation right here, which is this parenthesis. So it follows the distributive rule. So meaning on the if the, all of the terms on the left side will be distributed on the parenthesis. So x y times z. So we have the outputs right here x y z, which is this one, and x y z prime, which is this one. And all of these, this will be applied on every uh, operation that we had on this part. So, on the case of our third term, which is y prime, we are missing two literals. So, we're just going to apply, apply it twice. So, right here, y times 1 times 1. So, if I move, since my camera is blocking that part i'm just going to move it this way right here so as you can see we apply them apply it twice so after applying it so as you can see this one is very simple we just distribute them and now we focus on our third term so as you can see we first distribute the y prime to the x uh literals so now we have x y prime and x prime y prime and so our next step right here is to distribute this so we distribute x y prime to z and to x y prime to z prime so this is the output right here these two and then for the other term right here we distribute it again now we have x prime y prime z which is this one and now and then the other one is x prime y prime z prime which is right here and after doing that process we now look for any duplicates so as you can see i highlighted here 
the orange, which means that these are actually the same. And so there are there is the other rule that if we have if we add or if we or the same input, the output will always be the same. So meaning a plus a is all is always a. And so right here, since they are practically the same and the, there is an a plus sign. If we move it right here. So we can just combine these two into one. So that is for so the final equation for my uh, problem number seven is uh, right here. So I hope you can see this and it is not blocking my it is not blocked by camera. So uh, now we look at our uh, circuit simulator uh, uh, conver conversion. So as you can see, first I tried this uh, uh, original equation, and if we look at the analysis of the circuit, we notice that the only instance that we have an output of zero is zero one zero. So I created this table, so I just group it by two, and the remaining part, is, the remaining is, uh, input Z is right here, and so we just apply these inputs into into the equation. And as you can see, if the input is zero one zero, we have the output of zero. So we can say that. This table and this equation is the same. And now, if we look at our canonical form right here, since it is uh, very long, this is my circuit right here. And if we look at the analysis of this circuit, we can also see that if it is actually the same. So if the input is 0, 1, 0, the output is 0. So if we go back and compare it again, 0, 1, 0, and looking right here, 0, 1, 0. So we can say that uh, this table, this table, this equation, and this canonical form are all the same. So that is for my problem number seven. And that concludes for our uh, logistic circuit simulator series. My name is Carlo Castillo from CPE 107 Lab, Section D1, Group 4, and thank you for watching.